so now that we have our fingerboard rough cut and all our holes drilled, now we need to shape it and sand it. And you're going to see some crazy magic during the sanding phase. Don't say I didn't warn you if your mind is blown because there's something pretty cool that happens. Oh, just keep watching. All right, so in order to shape this thing, I need to figure out what it is we're trying to do. So first off, I know I'm gonna use 60 grit because I want as much material removal as possible, as easy as possible to start. So with the palm sander, so what I want to try to do first is I have edges that are that are ripply and uneven. I need to fix that. And then I also have uh, the edges are sharp. Now primarily the ones I'm worried about are the edge where it breaks from the top of the fingerboard to the side. That needs to be perfectly round and smooth. Now the edges that are all along the sides, the fingerboard I'm not so worried about because I'm gonna fill that in with wood filler to mate it to the neck. Um, but I will round it a little bit uh, just for good measure. And then the back, I wanna round that edge off as well. In the front, I need to round a lot. I actually wanna make it very rounded and smooth. So I need to completely knock off these corners and shape this down and just round that front a lot. So let's get to it. And the magic will come later. After we got the shape we want, I'll show you what happens when we sand the surface of the fretboard. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> This is all kind of a round over. So I'm gonna be kind of going in circles and then changing the angle of the fretboard to make sure that I get those edges nice and rounded. So you can see what we're achieving here. There's a nice rounded edge. And here's the original sharp edge. So I want to get that nice and round all the way up and down the fretboard. Alright, so... That side looks pretty good. Go ahead and attack the front. Try to get this thing really rounded out. Really want to make sure to knock those corners off and then taper or slope the front of it all the way from the nut down to the front because the strings are going to be rolling down that slope to the string retainer. Alright, so as you can see, the front is really rounded off now. So much so that I'm going to need to re-drill the... So much so that I'm going to need to uh, redrill the countersink for those two front screw holes, but that's okay. That's the shape that I, that's the shape that I wanted. So success. Just redrill those countersink holes real quick. some additional sanding that should work out fine 
Alright, now we need to smooth down the other side of the fingerboard. Alright, so... You can run your hand up and down it, kind of see how it feels. Seems pretty good to me. Um, so when you play the thing, what you're more going to feel is the back of the neck, which is going to be nice because it was made by people who know what they're doing. Um, you don't really feel the fingerboard that much. In fact, you know, your fingers don't ever really touch it. Um, the strings only touch the frets. So, that um, it's personal preference how smooth you want it. That seems fine to me. I'm just going to smooth out the very back and this edge here. Okay, so I knocked this corner off a little, so I'm going to do that to the other side as well. If you, if you do something you didn't intend to, but you can do it on the other side and make it symmetrical, then it looks intentional. That is pretty much all the shaping that I wanted to do with the 60 grit. So now, here's where the magic happens. So I accidentally discovered this. I think I was being dumb and just like, hey, I'll just sand everything um, when I was making one of these. But here's here's the real magic, right? So I'm gonna stick on stay on the 60 grit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand the entire surface of the fingerboard. And just wait and see what happens. Now to be clear, I'm I'm lightly sanding the surface for a texture effect here. I'm not trying to reshape anything because this is already perfect the way it is, the way it was manufactured. So I'm just sanding the surface enough to get a texture. Okay, so I'm run my hand over this. This all feels rough now. Okay, but I don't know if the camera can see this or not. But if you can see that texture, you can see that now there's a texture all over the entire surface. Now, this doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but when we lacquer this, this texture ends up looking like wood grain. I have no idea how. It was a complete accident the first time it happened, but now I have reproduced it several times, and that's it. That's all it takes, is just, just going over the whole thing with, uh, with the palm sander until you get that texture and then when you lacquer it it looks kind of like ebony um, which is awesome because the less this looks like part of a PVC pipe the better, right? Um, I mean we're still going to have zip ties for frets but, you know it's still pretty awesome so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm just going to kind of round over these bottom edges just a little bit just so that they play nice um, and try to keep that real light. Alright, there we go. So I've rounded over those bottom edges. Now let's uh, see how it sits on our neck. As you can see, it's looking pretty good. And the one thing that you can see is that even with cutting down, as I tried to do, you can see that we have kind of an, a recess there where the neck, the fingerboard, is not quite as wide as the neck. But that's okay because once we mount it to the neck, what we're going to do is we're going to fill that seam with wood filler and then that'll hide that 
and it'll make it look like, it'll hide the frets too, and it'll make it look like this is just uh, directly attached to the neck, basically. I'm gonna go back over these edges, which are kind of rough. Go back over it with the 100 grit, but I don't want to, I don't want to smooth out the texture on the flat part of the fingerboard, so I'm just going to be staying to the outside edges. So that pass with the 100 just uh, smoothed out the regions where you know, your hand's going to be touching it. Um, so now I'm just going to go back with the 320. And do those outside edges. And make them feel as nice as possible for when your hand's touching it. Alright, so there we go. Um, that's about where I call it and move on to lacquering this thing. So once again, we got that got that that fake wood grain texture, which looks like just a bunch of scratch marks right now. Once we lacquer, it's gonna bring it right out. Before we spray this down with lacquer, I want to take a damp paper towel and get all the uh, residue from the shaping process off of here and then you can spray it down with that black lacquer. Alright, so the first thing you gotta do is wipe this thing down with a damp paper towel. Make sure to get all the residue off it. Thank you. 